Last week, we launched the 60 family, RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti, bringing our newest architecture to the world's core gamers, starting at just $299. These GPUs, for the first time, provide 2x the performance of the latest gaming console at mainstream price points. Really, NVIDIA? Well, here we are, one month later, and we actually have 4060 reviews. And, well, let's actually compare 4060 performance to some recent release that was heavily analyzed on console. How about Hogwarts Legacy? Performance option averages out at about 1440p resolution. Oh, well, look at that. It seems to be averaging 1440p, meaning in some scenes it's lower, but in some scenes it's higher, always locked to 60 frames per second. Which, remember what that means, the average is above 60, with an average resolution of 1440p. And then let's look at what the 4060 gets in this game. Huh. 47 frames per second on average. And even the 4060 Ti has an average below 60 with drops to 41. Which means, even if we consider that the console versions have FSR in performance mode. And so, sure, maybe we could turn on DLSS for the 4060 and 4060 Ti. I still don't think that would get the 4060, at least with decently high levels of DLSS that looks good, to even 60 itself. And so we'd probably have to lower some settings, meaning, honestly, at best, I think it's safe to say the 4060 with comparable settings to the PS5 in 1440p like the PS5 would probably get a similar frame rate to the PS5, and I really wouldn't be confident saying you have a graphics card from the Lovelace lineup that's definitely as good or slightly better than the PS5, unless you have a 4060 Ti, meaning that this year NVIDIA has brought 2020 console performance to PC for 2020 console pricing before you also probably have to pay another thousand dollars for the rest of the system. Although to be fair, I do have to mention ray tracing, whether you use it or not, as always Lovelace has a massive advan- oh, it doesn't even really ray trace better than the 7600 or last gen RDNA 2 cards, meaning I'm not even sure this thing ray traces better than an Xbox Series X from 2020. Yeah, it's just time to call it then. The RTX 4060 is one of the worst graphics cards I've ever seen. It's a complete joke, and it's an insult to PC gamers. And, well, NVIDIA knows it is. That's why they went out there and looked around for which YouTube channels would shill for them before the official review day. And <laughs> there's a lot of reporting out there about which channels did. You'll be able to tell which one had early reviews of really specific parts of games from years ago that NVIDIA thought made them look good. And I don't want to dive into which channels directly because I'm just bored by those types of conversations. But I don't think that worked. I think the overwhelming majority of consumers waited until review day as always. And now they see that NVIDIA has launched yet another joke of an 8 gigabyte graphics card. And overall, the summary is, look, this thing is launching after the 7600 with about the same performance as the 7600, and it doesn't really bring anything to the table that's worth paying that extra money for. Especially when you consider the 7600 is now gravitating below $260, in fact, on the note of the 7600, that's one of the only interesting things that I think people may want to pay attention to from the stuff coming out today, which is that the 7600 seems to gain a little bit on the 4060. Well, when they're not both being destroyed by their tiny VRAM buffer, which when you consider that, the 7600 pulling ahead more on the 4060 and 1440p, despite them both being 128-bit cards, I don't think that's entirely explained by the fact that it has like 6% more bandwidth from GDDR6 being at 18 gigabit per second instead of 17 gigabit per second. I don't. I think that it's worth pointing out that AMD is... Infinity Cache, that they call L3 Cache, really does seem to perform about as well as NVIDIA's monolithic, always, L2 Cache that they spent a lot of die space on for the entirety of the Lovelace lineup, which just goes to show you how impressive RDNA 3's memory performance is, and any deficits that they have this generation is definitely just because those compute units 
aren't performing as well as they wanted them to. But I would say if AMD can fix how their RDNA 3 compute units are functioning for RDNA 3.5 or RDNA 4 in a year or so, that they definitely seem to have the more efficient, cost-wise at least, memory system compared to NVIDIA, and that might be something really exciting. But for now, though, if you're looking for a budget graphics card, it's not the latest gen you want to get. If we're being honest, it's not even the 7600, definitely not the 4060. It's last gen graphics cards that are really worth getting at insane prices right now. And based on what I've heard from some of the sources I've talked to, they're confirming that's what everybody else is deciding as well. And now I want to leak some sales information from a lot of different retailers like what's going on in the gpu market right now will prices continue to go down but first an ad from a sponsor this piece of content is brought to you by the geekom as6 powered by an r9 6900 hx and the intel nuc 13 pro arena canyon powered by an i7 1360p both mini pcs have impeccable build quality tons of io and come with 32 gigabytes of ram and a one terabyte gen 4 nvme ssd as standard and they are really just incredible portable workstations they don't really give up anything if you're using them professionally the intel system of course has a thunderbolt port in it if that's something you need but otherwise despite the intel system generally being able to run most AAA games at minimum settings i honestly do recommend the amd 6900 hx to most people it doesn't just run most AAA games it runs all of them usually in either 720p at higher settings locked at 60 frames or at medium to low settings at highish frame rates in 1080p and it actually comes with multiple hdmis and display port outs meaning when i say this can work as a workstation that fits in a bag i, I really mean it it can power a bunch of professional displays and that eight core zen 3 plus processor doesn't hold anything back but no matter which one you want i do think both worked great and i do want to thank Geekom for providing them so I could do some benchmarking and iGPU research for a recent video of mine. Go check out that video to see more about these products. But otherwise, check out Geekom in the links in the description to support Moore's Law is Dead and check out if these products are the right thing for you. They supported Moore's Law is Dead. So if you need a product like this, support Geekom for supporting me. Check out Geekom today. All right, like I said before the break, Right now, you should really only be looking at last-gen products like a 6700 XT for $320 or, honestly, an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte for $270. And this market really isn't a bad option if you're trying to save money. And a lot of gamers apparently agree. Let me put these quotes on screen to give you guys an idea of what's going on in the GPU market right now. So, source number one tells me, and this is someone at a non-US major retailer, that the 3060 and 3050 are selling fairly well below $300, uh, the 3050 especially if it's 250 or lower, and that the 6700 XT and 6600 XT are also selling okay. But besides that, it's just crickets. Everything else in this country that this retailer is in, this person tells me is selling horribly, even the 4090. And then if we move over to source number two, which is a major U.S. retailer, I am told similar things, though. That clearance pricing GPUs, as this person called them, like the 3060 Ti below 300, the 4070 if it's ever below 600 sometimes, and 6750 XTs, 6650 XTs, these are selling pretty well. And actually, in the high end, the 7900 XTX still is moving multiple units daily at many locations now that it's 950 or lower on average. But basically, every other GPU is turning into a loser. This person doesn't think at their location that they've sold a single 4080 all month and that 4090 sales are basically gone and it's just the occasional person that shows up every other week getting it for AI research. Now, source number three, which is a major online retailer, actually checked through the system and told me that the summary is that 4090 sales are way, way, way down. And the only high-end cards they're seeing selling anymore in high numbers are oddly 4070 Ti's, but really only when they're at $800 or below that during a sale. And surprisingly, the 7900 XTX and XT is selling fairly well now that they're about 10 to 20% below MSRP, which if you think about it, a 7900 XTX that gets below 900, it's about half the price of a 4090. And it has 50% more RAM than a 
4080 that probably costs 30 to 50 percent more than that still so yeah i can see why people are still buying this and as long as amd can keep those prices there sustainably basically every source i talk to says high-end rdna3 is selling well but in the mid-range and low end it is all discount rdna2 and 3060s that's all anyone's buying right now and in fact source number four told me that just overall though never forget how bad it is in general well i can tell you that some of these gpus are selling better than others and a few are standouts like the 3060 and the 7900 xtx that overall gpu sales are massively down and that and this person tells me that mom and pop computer stores in their location, many of them have gone out of business. And it's really just the ones focusing on motherboard and CPU sales that are surviving because of how cheaply they can get like discount Alder Lake and Zen 4 right now. A lot of people are doing new builds, but those new builds tend to have last gen discount GPUs. Nobody wants garbage current gen pricing. And based on this data provided to me by my retail sources and sources in the supply chains, I just have to say that I'm as tired of it as it seems like everybody else is. I am tired of seeing graphics cards with 8 gigabytes launch for too much money or 12 gigabyte cards launch with the same performance or worse than last gen. I'm tired of uninteresting launches. And so in my opinion, the only way AMD should respond to the 4060 or any other upcoming Lovelace launches is by something truly better than what you could get years ago or just don't bother and actually that is my overall opinion on this one i think over time navi 23 you know the 6600 which is only 180 right now through the 6650 xt those navi 23 cards as they sell out i think the 7600 that is going to gravitate to 200 dollars which remember the rx 7600 costs less to make than a 6600 xt and possibly actually a little less to make than a 6600 i think the 7600 once last gen rdna2 is gone is going to become a 200 dollars card and after that if i was amd i would just try to launch a 16 gigabyte version of the 7600 for like 330 or 300 dollars if they can manage it and then maybe a 16 gigabyte 7800 for 550 not maybe not even launch a 7800 xd and then i just kind of call it a day you know based on what i am hearing there is a plan in september by amd to maybe launch some 16 gigabyte card uh from navi 32 and maybe also one from navi 31 as i've already leaked that navi 32 31 hybrid card and then some 12 gigabyte card for like 500 dollars or less but i don't think there's a point this market is tired of boring and stupid launches and i think what we are seeing in sales suggests that amd nvidia if what you're gonna launch does nothing new then don't bother and that is my honest advice to amd then don't bother you have the 7900 XTX at like 900. You'll have the 7900 XT at like 750. And then maybe launch a 7800 for 550. Maybe launch a 7700 if you give it 16 gigabytes for 450. And then just get out a 16 gigabyte 7600 for 330 or something and call it a day. There's like six cards total. That's all this market needs. And then as last gen stock dries up, if the market, if interest from gamers improves, then maybe you launch a 7800 XT with that Navi 3132 hybrid configuration that I leaked. And maybe you launch a 7700 XT and a refresh. But everything else, everything else is a waste of time. And if a product is redundant, it is time for these companies to stop bothering. Oh, and NVIDIA, you go way beyond me telling you not to bother. Get back in your portal. 2020 called and they want their performance back.